Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spear, you can never have enough iron, and welcome to Pyanodon Recap Super Shorts. As a reminder, in this series, I recap builds that me and my partner Arch Ezekiel made in working through Pyanodon's alternative energy. In the last episode, we discussed the two power systems that we're using to power our train base, a wog power and coal power. And in this episode, I'm going to discuss how we made our first foray into our train base with a system that makes iron plates. She was a bit of a doozy. As you can see, there are a lot of train inputs and train outputs going on here. There's even more up here, it's crazy. But the reason we picked iron as our first thing to do, even though it required so many train inputs, is because it required so many train inputs? By setting up a build that needed a lot of other builds to exist in the train base, it incentivized us to make a working train base that had all of those inputs. And lo and behold, once we made all those inputs, we had a functional train base. Shocking. So before we get into all those bits, let me just talk about some of the numbers. Our goal is to make 15 iron plates per second using the Iron 2 processing research. In Iron 1 research, we learned how to um, smelt processed iron ore into molten iron, but even earlier than that, we learned how to split iron ore into processed iron ore. But Iron 2 introduces a large processing chain for what you do with this processed iron ore. Now, you may be wondering, Jonathan, why are you delivering processed iron ore over here and not iron ore? Well, you'll notice that processed iron ore has a stack size of 100, but normal iron ore only has a stack size of 50. So if you want train density, you have to send processed iron ore. Even better for density, however, 5 iron ore turns into 3 processed iron ore. So you almost quadruple your train density and reduce how many times you're sending trains around. I feel as if reducing how many times we send trains for any given build is going to be a good and important thing. The actual station is here. It uses five jaw crushers and six electric mining drills to make all the processed iron we need. You'll notice that right this moment, the extra stone from the processed iron is being loaded into a train which is collecting that stone. And I'll explain our process for collecting byproducts soon. It might be in the next episode. It involves some vaguely sneaky little tricks involving the CyberSign mod, which is the train management mod that we're using for this playthrough instead of LTN. But the process iron gets collected, and then it gets delivered to a storehouse, and that process iron begins its great journey. Five automated screeners turn it into three different versions of iron, grade one, two, and three. They all go onto one belt, but then the grade three is split off to be turned into more grade two, which then goes onto the shared belt. The grade 2 splits off and turns into grade 1, which is put on the shared belt, but you can see there's the splitter. The gravel gets exported um, via another byproduct management section. All of that iron grade 1 gets turned into iron ore dust in 6 ball mills, but things just continue to get wackier. Iron ore dust uh, with water turns into iron pulp. And also iron slime. We were not conveniently near any water sources, and there was a lot of water required for this, but thankfully, in logistics science, we were given something called the pump jack, which makes 300 water per second for free. If free means like five intermetallics, it's really cheap. Both the iron pulp and iron slime can turn into unslimed iron, a little boxy thing. The iron slime is the cheapest in terms of power in the hydro classifier, but a centrifuge is used to turn iron pulp into unslimed iron, and it is like 20 megawatts. It eats so much energy. It used to eat like over 100 megawatts, which was terrible, but I think it's much better now. Finally, all that unslimed iron comes down to make some molten iron. And then the molten iron is turned into iron, which we pump up to its output right here. To get all the immense amount of oxygen that we'd need for all of this molten iron, we decided not to use electrolyzers, which would be fairly freakishly expensive in terms of power. Remember, each of them cost about 10 megawatts. But it turns out you can reduce power costs per oxygen a lot by creating oxygen in a different but less space-dense way. This massive block of 13 destructive distillation columns turns pressurized air from 13 pressure pumps into purest nitrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. We were throwing away the purest nitrogen and nitrogen, but eventually we decided to stack like 5 million more destructive distillation columns because the nitrogen was needed for niobium, but we'll talk about that when we get to niobium, which is not now. You must be patient. We also have a fun additional input for steel. Coke joins with oxygen to make molten steel for molten iron, and then we can turn that into lots of steel plates. This makes about 2 steel plates per second at max capacity, which is way more than we need, ever. Ever is an exaggeration. But now that we've talked about the basics of the iron build, let's go into some of the auxiliaries that made it possible. Starting with the strange and mysterious and actually not that problematic workings of CyberSign. CyberSign is a train logistics dispatcher mod similar to LTN. Its pros and cons with respect to LTN I simply do not know because I have never used LTN before so do not ask me. 
But I can tell you how it works. Trains chug around on networks. Hooking up a cybernetic combinator to a train stop by putting it next to a train stop puts that train stop on the CyberSign network. You can set that station to be a requester, provider, or I guess both if that ever happens. To tell a cybernetic combinator that you have a request, you need to put a a negative input signal for the item you want to request onto the circuit network that attaches to the input of the cybernetic combinator. For example, we want to request 4,000 processed iron ore. There's also this cute little signal called request threshold, which tells CyberSign to wait until we need a certain amount to send a train. You may be wondering, Jonathan, why is your request threshold 20 when your actual request amount is 4,000? That seems freakishly small. Um, you can use the stack thresholds option, and then all request thresholds will be interpreted as number of stacks. That way, you can tailor your request thresholds to the number of slots in your train. At some point, we're going to get the better pie trains that have, like, so many more slots, and we're going to have to change all the request thresholds, and we'll be so sad. And that's, like, next science, too, so... Uh. Anyway, we clearly have more than enough process iron ore, but as soon as one train cargo's worth of process iron ore is not in the storehouse, it'll request another one. Trains in our fun little fanny depot here are all attached to the cybernetic network, using a cybernetic combinator that has been set to depot mode. You'll notice that the cybernetic combinator does not have A or B on it for its network, it has an each star. That is what this constant combinator is for, it is telling the each star that the cybernetic combinator is on networks both A and B, which turns out to be very useful for things other than depots, which I may tell you about in this episode and may tell you about in the next one. We'll find out. Anyway, process iron gets requested, whatever. Congratulations. We are also requesting borax and sand casting. We're supplying sand casting down here on the bus where we make aluminium. We were literally just like, hmm, it doesn't seem like we're using too much aluminium, and this tar processing unit has extra sand casting. Why don't we just siphon the sand casting from it? We request sand casting in very small increments because we do not make it very often, but also do not need much of it. Hopefully, this will never bite us in the ass. I mean, there's like 2,000, 2,400 in here, something like that. Borax is coming from, like, six crystal mines, and when we hooked all these up, Syngas and our base instantly died because we were having troubles with Syngas. We are, like, not having troubles with Syngas anymore, but we're always at a tenuous balance where we suddenly might start having troubles with Syngas and then we'll die, but hopefully that doesn't happen anytime soon. Hint, while I'm recording this episode, I have already solved that problem, but that's, like, so many episodes from now, so shh. I guess this is a reasonable time to show you how the cybernetic combinator for a provider station works. It's literally just you set it to provide, and then you put a circuit from your storage object to your cybernetic combinator. And the combinator is like, wow, I have 10,000 borax to supply? That's so cool. If you're playing Pi, by the way, I highly suggest not having automatic allow list enabled, and so I'm disabling that right now, because cybernetic combinators count whether a train is allowed to be at a station based on how many slots for a normal sized train are at that station. But the thing about Pi trains is that when you upgrade to the next tier, you take your original one cargo wagon, and then you split it into two cargo wagons, and each of those has the same capacity as the previous tier. And so Cybertron is like, wow, that train has two cargo wagons? It is not allowed at any place where you can only have one cargo wagon, even though the two cargo wagons combined are the same size as one. I should show you visually, but I am not because I don't have those objects right now. Sorry. Anyway, point is, turn off automatic allow list. Do not have it on if you are playing Pi. You will cry otherwise. We are importing hot air, which also comes off the bus at the same place that the sand castings do. We are having minor issues with hot air at the moment because of an issue with the coal power plant that I discovered, like, a little bit ago. While recording an episode that's, like, so many episodes away from this one, I don't know why I'm recording them out of order, but... In our coal power plant, I forgot to put a self-insert on this burner. And so the burner filled with a thousand ash, which means the entire coal power plant shut down. So it's a good thing we have another power plant. The extra funny thing about this is that I'm recording this basically at the same time as an episode that's like seven episodes from now. And seven episodes from now, I discovered that this was an issue. So if in seven episodes you hear me talking about how, damn, I forgot to put a self-insert on this burner, you can laugh and remember how I told you about that in episode three. The last necessary input was coke, and boy was she a doozy. Incidentally, she's also the source of our refueling station, so maybe I should just save this for like another episode. No, 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 I'm telling you about CyberSign. You need to know about refueling stations now. Okay, fine, a little bit more. Off we go to refueling land. Trains are so fast, and they go places so fast. I don't need to lay down concrete anywhere. I just have to put down trains. It's great. In this house, we utilize the fun and sexy coke processing stage two. 
which allows you to turn coal into red-hot coke, and then turn that red-hot coke into lots of coke. You also get a lot of friendly coal dust, which is why we have a deposit full of 24,000 coal dust. Coal dust, which by the way, can be really quickly used if you are not careful, my god. Anyway, we send in a full belt of coal to these lovely little secondary crutchers, which make us coal, crushed coal, and coal dust. Crush coal gallivants up to make coarse coal, just like in our fun coal power plant. And then we send all the coal and coarse coal over to these basic oxygen furnaces. The coarse coal is used to fuel the oxygen furnaces at a reasonably good rate, and the excess fuels some of the steam which supplies the basic oxygen furnaces to turn coal into red-hot coke. Still, it's not enough for all that damn steam. So, we take all this delicious 500 degree coke oven gas, which could totally be used to make more hot air, and then we trash it in some oil burners, that's all it's good for. I mean, we have hot air, like, sitting up there already. And the other option would have been to apply electric boilers, and so it was power, or like this free fuel source. We used the free fuel source. Of course, we did have to apply an electric boiler anyway, but it's got like an underflow valve, so it rarely runs. Anyway, all that lovely red-hot coke gets turned into coke. Wow, this did not take as long to summarize as I thought. It was actually really easy. Shocking. Shh. These aren't arcades. You're not seeing any arcades. Coke pops over to this warehouse that's full of 45,000 coke. Shocking. Considering that it has 450 storage spots and there's 100 coke in each and our train base is not running at full speed. Refuel train stops are predictably labeled by using a cybernetic combinator that says refueler. It has automatic allow lists, so I feel like I should probably delete the- I don't know. Uh, maybe it'll fuck things up later? We'll find out, I guess. We have a while before the second tier of trains anyway. And then we have this cute little thing that tells us how much coke our train system has used so far, and it's only used 1200. And 20. So we are really not running very fast. Anyway, that's all the inputs we needed to make this crazy iron system work. One thing left to talk about, which we'll move to another episode because it's fairly big, is byproduct management. Because we do make some ash and gravel from this system, and if you look back at where we made the processed iron ore, we also made some excess stone. And I believe at the beginning of the episode you saw a train collecting the stone very, very slowly. So where does all of it go? How do we deal with it? You'll find out, and it'll involve some funny network shenanigans in the next episode, where we talk about byproduct management. And of course, since this is a big build, we need a name for it. So if you have any ideas, we would love to have them. The name should have a very funny acronym. If you're inspired, you could make one for the Coke build instead. Or, or both, why not? I mean, creativity knows no bounds, except tiredness. One thing I forgot about the Coke system, we stored a bunch of Coke oven gas, because as it turns out, Coke oven gas is useful for making arcades, and we made arcades shortly after this. So, store your Coke oven gas. Store it, I say, store it. By the way, you can keep up with me and Arch in a way that's not these recap videos by checking out Arch Ezekiel's streams, which happen every Tuesday. I'll post a link in the description so you can check us out. But that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!